welcome back to Turner Creek Spark Chaser. I got a cool video for you today. Today we're going to talk all about wire sizes, their opacities, and where you typically find them in your house. Now I'll go from the smallest wire to the largest wire and tell you what the size is, what the impacity rating is, what circuit it's on, and what breakers typically use for that wire or cable size. Now there are times when a professional electrician is going to have to be used because you have to pull permits and follow codes, especially going from your meter to your service panel because the length of wire or cable used for that instance will determine the size of the cable you're going to use. But without further ado, let's get into each wire and I'll show you exactly what you need to know for your installation. Let's first talk about some basic terminology of cables and wires. So what's a cable and what's a wire? Well, these are considered wires right here. They're singular wires. And when you start to introduce more wires, it becomes a cable. So multiple wires make up a cable. Now let's go back to the wires a second and talk about the insulation jacket. And that's just the jacket that covers the copper or the aluminum. Now these are considered NM, so non-metallic. They're also called THHN, THWN, and really the list goes on and on, but we're gonna keep it very basic. And all that means is the environment that you can have the wire or the cable. There could be damp locations, locations with oil. The list really does go on, but let's keep it basic. Now for your cables, these are Romex examples right here. Romex color codes their size wire. So yellow will typically be number 12. For, uh, for 14, it'd be gray or white. If you had orange here, it'd be number 10. And for your eights and your sixes, it's gonna be black or some other color depending upon the man manufacturer. Now for the Romex identifier, these are 12, two. You have two wires with a ground. They don't ever count the ground. And then this is a 12, three. This is a 14-2 and this is an 8-2. So that's just the basic terminology of wires and cables. Now let's talk about what's typically found in a home today and that's where yellow tape comes into play. So today you'll find typically 14, 12, 8, 10, 6, and 2 watt. Your 14 to your 6s are gonna be found in a Romex style cable. From your meter to your service panel, you're gonna find those in wires like the 2 watt right here. 2 watt is the minimum requirement for a 200 amp service as per the NEC, but I've seen these go much larger and that's mostly dependent upon how far of a run it is between those two points, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now let's talk about each individual wire and what they're used for. One of the more common sizes you'll find in a house is the number 14 size right here. In conjunction with this, you wanna use a 15 amp circuit breaker with this size wire. Now, number 14 can handle more than 15 amps. It can actually handle between 20 and 25 amps depending upon the temperature rating. But as a general industry standard, we associate 14 gauge wire with a 15 amp circuit breaker. Now, these are gonna be found with a Romex, either 14.2 or 14.3, which is right here. 14.2 just goes between your breaker to your outlets and then to a single light switch configuration. If you have multiple light switches, you can use your 14.3. These are used for general outlets and lighting circuits only. Number 12 is also a very common wire we use in today's homes. That's this guy right here. So we associate number 12 wire with a 20 amp circuit breaker. Now number 12 can actually handle between 25 and 30 amps, but on the side of caution, Again, general industry standard, we use a 12 for a 20 amp circuit breaker. You will find this in a Romex configuration right here, either a 12.2 or a 12.3. And this typically you'll find more so in kitchens with small appliances that require more juice to operate those appliances. But I know today typically, I know when I wire stuff up, I'll run number 12 to mostly all of my outlets inside of the house just to give that added capacity for each outlet. Number 10 cables and wires are not so common in houses today, but they are still used. We wanna associate a number 10 with a 30 amp circuit breaker. Number 10 can take a lot more amperage than that, actually between 30 and 40 amps. But again, industry standard, refer to a number 10 with a 30 amp breaker. Now this is also found in Romex, either 10.2 or a 10.3. And I put down here water heaters or circuit dependent. 
So a lot of appliances that you put in your house, they will actually tell you the requirement of amps needed for that appliance to work successfully. So you have to look at the documentation and that will tell you if you need to use a number 10 versus a number eight versus a number six. And once you get to the number 10 size wire, now we can start using either a double pull breaker versus just a single pull breaker with our number 12. So now we're dealing with 115 and 230 volt configurations. Number eight is right here. Now a number eight wire is typically used with a 40 amp circuit breaker. Now number eight can handle between 40 and 55 amps depending upon the temperature and use. But again, normal's industry standard, number eight with a 40 amp circuit breaker. This can be found in also Romex configuration, 8-2 or 8-3. Now most typically you find number eight on electric dryers, so like your clothes dryer in your house. It also is circuit dependent, so again, there are unique circumstances when you have to run a dedicated circuit with using number eight. And this is typically on a 230 volt circuit, so a double pull breaker in your service panel. Number six is also found, this is that wire right here. We associate number six with a 50 amp circuit breaker. Number six can actually handle between 55 and 75 amps depending upon temperature and its use. But again, typically number six with a 50 amp circuit breaker. This is also found in a Romex 6.2 or 6.3. And I put down here electric ranges. That's the most common that this wire is used for. And it's also circuit dependent. So again, what you put inside your house depends upon the manufacturer's guidelines of what cable and breaker you use. Now, number six is typically used with a double pull, so we're talking with 230 volts. Okay, now that we got all the small wires taken care of that go inside our house, now let's talk about what goes between our meter and our service panel. And this can vary a lot. Okay, now the NEC has a minimum requirement of using a two watt copper cable or wire between your meter and your service panel. Now that's for a 200 amp service. There are larger amp services and smaller amp services, but I'm talking just about a 200 amp service. Now we can go bigger than that. Now my house actually uses a 250 KC mill size wire, and this is a three aught, then you have a four aught, and the 250 is just a bit bigger than the four aught. Now mine uses that size cable because my run from my meter to my panel is much longer than the 50 feet to use for a two watt. Now this is where I would get a trained electrical professional to, that knows code and that follows um, permit regulations and such to make sure you have the right size wire that goes between those two points. That just about wraps the video up. We went through a whole bunch of information with you with wire sizing and passing ratings and where those wires are used in certain circuits in your house. Remember, consult a professional, especially with the wire size between the meter and the service panel. A lot of variables come into play with distance and voltage drop, and you wanna make sure you have the right size wire between those two points. Drop a like if the video helped you. Leave me a comment down below. I can answer questions if you have any. And please subscribe to the channel if this video helped you in any way. Until next time, thanks a lot and take it easy.